My oh my guys, just when you think you have seen it all, you see something like you've never seen before. A CEO lost it on a conference call worse than I've ever seen any CEO lose it on a conference call before. I've been on many conference calls in the past where a CEO will get frustrated with an analyst questions or maybe be a little snarky back or something like that or maybe just kind of be a little mad and just kind of in like that type of mode, you know? You're getting a lot of questions from analysts and, and sometimes they're negative questions. You don't want to answer them and you're used to being the big boss, all right? And you don't want to take their crap and, and sometimes it gets a little frustrating, okay? Especially if the analysts are or negative on your company. However, this situation, this CEO took it to a whole nother level, okay? Talking about the analysts uh, might do or should do suicide or something like, like guys, this is, this, is, this is ridiculous, okay? So first off, for a little backstory on what this company is, it's actually a pretty big company, okay? It's a company called Cleveland Cliffs, which operates an iron ore mining company in the United States. The company operates four iron ore mines in Michigan and Minnesota. They also have a, uh, uh, set up in Australia, okay? It sells its products to integrated steel companies and steel producers in the United States and Asia Pacific, all right? Um, this company's been around for a long, long time, and this is a company that has a market cap over $3 billion, okay? This is a company that's worth over $3 billion. It has a trailing P of around seven, a Ford P of around six, very, very low, all right? And uh, after we see the stock is falling over 7% here today after the CEO pretty much uh, completely lost it. And and if you look at the stock chart on this stock, it, it's a pretty decent stock. You know, I mean, look at the six month. This was a stock that was under $7 and now it's over $10. So it's not like it's a stock that hasn't performed at all. It's actually had a pretty good 2018, all right? Now the CEO who lost it, this guy Lurcino Gonclaves, all right? He was appointed chairman, president, and CEO of Cliffs in August of 2014. So he's been in that position for quite a while, over four years now. Since joining the company has implemented and been executing a strategic initiative designing to strengthen Cliff's position as a major supplier of iron ore uh, pallets to the U.S. steel industry, all right? So pretty, pretty interesting, and you can read the more of his backstory there. So now let's get into exactly what was said here on this conference call, all right? He just completely loses it. He says, oh, it's un this is a quote from him, it's unbelievable that these big banks still employ these type of people. You should resign for your lack of knowledge of things. It's not like you don't understand. You are one of the very best. It's not like you don't understand our business. You don't understand your own business. You are a disaster. You are an embarrassment to your parents. Like this is coming after an analyst, guys. This is ridiculous. I've never seen a CEO lose it this bad. You are an embarrassment to your parents, he says. With this being said, we are going to use our money to reward the long-term shareholders. So if the stock continues to go down based on these kids that play with computers and somebody else's money, we are going to buy back stock. We are going to screw this guy so bad Badly that I don't believe that they are ever going to be able to resign. They will have to commit suicide. Guys, are you serious? Are you serious with this guy? He, this is, the, I've never seen a CEO lose it like this ever in my life. This is insane. So we're gonna screw this guy so badly that this will be fun to watch. That will be my first priority other than the two uh, top priorities of finishing HBI and paying down debt. You are, meet, you are meeting with the wrong guy. That's my message to you. Like, are you serious with this, guys? Are you, are you I, like, I, I was reading this, I'm like, a CEO of a major company, a company worth three billion plus dollars, is saying this, and is calling an analyst an embarrassment. Like, I, I completely understand a, a frustration a CEO or anybody can have with an analyst, okay? We all get frustrated with them. They come out and say something negative about one of our stocks, sends a stock, like, I have, uh, I have I hold a lot of stocks that analysts just don't see the vision for or something like that. And I'm like, I think that analyst is wrong. I think over the long term, they don't see the vision. I think I see the vision. I'm sure we all feel like that, uh, you know, from time to time. And a lot of analysts have, you know, have, are really unsuccessful, let's be honest, okay? I'm certainly not the biggest fan of analysts out there. As a matter of fact, I'm probably, uh, analysts are probably one of my biggest enemies. However, there's a difference between um, being, not, not agreeing with an analyst or feeling like you don't like analysts 
and saying things like they're an embarrassment to their parents or saying things like they're going to have to commit suicide. Like this is a whole different level, okay? You go from uh, this is a competitive game, this is a money game, to now all of a sudden you've taken it to such a deep, dark place that this is this is really ugly, guys, okay? So Gonclave specifically went after Goldman Sachs analyst Matthew Korn saying, you can run, but you can't hide. Korn has a hold rating on the shares, okay? Let's read more of this. So uh, Lisa, this is more from him, okay? Lisa, before you go call on the next question, are there a guy named Matthew Korn, this guy does not speak uh, you know, perfect English, obviously, waiting on the line to ask to, uh, a question? He is, he calls himself an analyst and he works for Goldman Sachs. Oh, Matthew Korn, if you are in the call, why don't you ask a freaking question? I'll be happy to answer, okay? Who is next, Lisa? With that, we are done. And Matthew Korn from Goldman Sachs, you can run, but you can't hide. I will see you at the Goldman Sachs conference very soon and bring your commodity desk guy because you owe me for the last year, okay? So whatever, something happened last year, he owes him for. It will be easier for you if you have the commodity desk guy with you uh, <laughs> for interviewing me. If you are alone, it will be a lot worse. It will be bad no matter what but it will be a lot worse if you're alone. Bring the commodity desk guy, man. He really wants them to bring the commodity desk guys or girls with you, like, uh, uh, because you pro I promised you last year that I will take care of him. Her next time, next time is coming. I'll see you guys through soon. Thank you for joining me on this call today. Guys, this is insane. Like, like literally, I've never seen something like this in 10 years of being in the stock market, and even like studying, you know, way prior to me being in the stock market. I've never seen an analyst go this crazy like this is this is like scary crazy okay like like what is wrong with this dude like he has completely gone off the rails all right now it's a very confusing situation because I don't know why he's so mad at this Matthew Korn guy specifically if there's anyone he should be mad at it's this guy named Gordon Johnson so Gordon Johnson back in 2017 remember the CEO mentioned something about last year okay so Gordon Johnson in 2017 he said that you know Cliff CEO who had purchased some shares of the stock he said it's a sell signal. This was like uh, pretty, pretty, you know, a little dirty by this analyst, okay? You don't usually say something like that. That's pretty disrespectful. You're going to say something like, oh, CEO's buying his own stock. That's a sell signal because he always buys at bad times. And that's basically what this guy said, named Gordon Johnson. However, this is a totally different guy because, okay, a Goldman Sachs, it looks like they initiated Cleveland Cliffs back in March, okay? Back in the spring with a neutral rating. It wasn't even like it was a negative rating. So I'm so confused on, on why the CEO is coming back. I was so hard against this Matthew Korn guy. I think if anybody he was to come out hard against, and once again, he shouldn't have came at anybody this hard, okay? But if he was to come out at anybody, I would assume it would be that Gordon Johnson guy because that's the guy that last year, and he, he mentioned last year, said, oh, if the CEO buys shares, that's a sell signal because he always buys at bad times or whatever, okay? So I'm amazed that he is coming this far over on this guy, Matthew Korn, for Goldman Sachs, who it looks like they initiated coverage back in the spring with a neutral rating. It's not even a negative rating. Like neutral means you're just you don't feel uh, bullish on the stock. You don't feel bearish on the stock. It's not like you said it's a strong sell. You you basically have five different ratings. There could be a strong sell, which means you know you want your your clients to flood out of that stock. It doesn't matter what price, just get out of it. There's also a sell, which means you know strategically sell your shares off. There's a hold or a neutral, which just kind of means like like you're you're indifferent about the shares. You just think it's gonna probably you know do whatever. There's also a buy, which means you should you you are kind of like recommending your clients to buy shares. And then there's a strong buy, which means you say just get in that stock any way possible, okay? This Matthew Korn, it looks like he has a neutral rating. So I cannot understand why this CEO is coming so hard against this Matthew Korn. Once again, if anything, it should have been the Johnson guy he came after because that's a guy that, you know, that's a little disrespectful to say as an analyst. Oh, the CEO bought shares. Oh, go ahead and uh, sell that stock because he buys at the worst times or something like that's kind of a little, that's kind of a little left, okay? Um, but but my goodness, guys! Like regardless, like telling the guy he's an embarrassment to his parents. Like 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 this was taking things way too far. This CEO completely lost on that conference call. And the worst thing about this for for shareholders out there is this is going to scare away a lot of shareholders from the company now because they're looking at this and like. 
if that guy went that crazy over this analyst, uh, uh, what's he? What what are the potential of him to go against a, a, an employee or something like that or a competitor? Like like if this guy might not be the most stable guy. That's the way people are gonna look at this now for saying stuff like that. Like like this is insane, guys. Like I've seen CEOs lose it. Like I said many times on conference calls, or, or not lose it, but get frustrated or say, you know, can we take another question or that's a stupid question or something like that. There's a whole different ball game be between that and what this guy said. So this is unbelievable, guys. I want to hear your guys' opinion down there in the on the uh, comment section. Have you ever heard anything like this? Uh, a CEO act this way? Like this is the most insane thing I've ever seen. Um, you know, it just takes things to a whole new level when you're talking about people doing suicide and embarrassment to their parents and stuff like that. That's a whole nother level. Like you could think about the one of the most uh, out there aggressive people against like short sellers or negative analysts might be Elon Musk. But even Elon Musk, you know, he might say, oh, I'll buy you short shorts or something like that. Or, or his maybe most aggressive thing was we'll burn the shorts or something like that, you know, and we're going to get the stock up or whatever. Nothing around suicide and like like that's just different. That's different level, guys. That's um that's taking it to a really really deep dark place. So, anyways, want to hear from you guys down there in that comment section as always. Thank you for watching and have a great day.